Hi, okay, I feel I need to make this um, sort of a amendment or attach extension to the video to clarify a couple of things. People uh, typically have uh, said to me, have asked me, not understanding really where I'm heading with it or what it what it proposes in the big in the big picture of of this of the theorem or thesis or however you want to see it uh, or analysis. What do you have against gay people? Or or they say like you know they think that I have a problem with accepting myself. Or, um, or, or what's the point of it? You know, why is it so important? You know, this, these sort of comments. And I think it's important to understand really the, as far as, as the purposefulness, as far as the, the premise or the point of it uh, goes, it needs to be explained uh, so that people understand. And I think if this is understood, maybe the argument or the, the discussion or the theorem of it, that I'm presenting will make more sense. So, um, for one, it is not intended to say, well, we can get rid of homosexuality. Uh, it is not meant to say, this is a way in which we won't suffer, or because I use the word afflicted, right? And there is, it's, homosexuality is a consequence. I don't know what the best word is, but it's a consequence that occurs to human sexuality to, to people because of something. So it's not a pathology. It's not a terrible thing. It's something that nature resorts to, something that happens because of the way sexuality is set up. Whatever you want to call it is not important. I hope people don't get fixed on my bad terminology. But the point of it is not to have it disappear. The point of it is for it to... Um, occur in natural, in whatever the natural level for a healthy society, that a healthy society would, in other words, as it is right now, um, the amount of homosexuality in society is enormous. I mean, if you add the people that advocated and acknowledged that, or, um, I mean, uh, defined themselves as gay and advocated, if you add all the people who who would, who are really thinking about it, but don't, uh, which is a number that is almost impossible to estimate. But if you add all these, the number is enormous. And like I say, it has to do with how we believe um, we ought to be towards each other, how we treat each other, how we raise our children, how we are towards one another, um, how well we love, and all the matters that have to do with intimacy and um, male emotionality and communication between males and bonding and you know it all will result in, in, the, in the nurturing of uh, love that develops and uh, that develops and matures people, the children and the people. And so the point is not for there not to be any. The point is for it to arrive at whatever expression, is proportionately natural to the species um, because technically you it will never really be able to be this you know somebody will always no matter how super confident and healthy we are socially and how how desiring of the opposite gender a society may learn to uh, raise itself and and produce individuals that are fully uh, fully optimally developed in their sexuality, there's always going to be that, hey, why don't, how about if we try doing that, see what happens, and then all of a sudden you will have that third response of the biology and the chemistry that, you know, the pleasure and, the, oh, that was interesting, that was a little weird, but, you know, hey, you know, so there will always be a number, a factor of its occurrence that you can't have it make it disappear because it, it's not a physical thing, it's not individuals, and it's not an object. <laughs> So that's one point, the natural proportionality of it. Um, and perhaps, perhaps uh, we have never known that low number because mankind has always been horrible to itself. We have always treated ourselves badly. We have uh, warred and conquered and killed our own children and, and incarcerated people. And we were just terrible 
as a, as a civilization to ourselves. And so homosexuality must be a direct result of how badly we're able to run our societies instead of healing and living in some sort of uh, congeniality or, uh, or some degree of, of, you know, maybe we can argue and, and fight and have even violence, but it doesn't mean we need to kill each other, incarcerate or war and, and conquer and obliterate other countries, you know. We can still be a, 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 an explosive personality without harming one another. And so since we've never known that world, um, we've never known what the proportion of the, the, the uh, relating proportion to that of homosexual expression and, and the sexuality of the species would occur. Okay, so that's one reason. <laughs> that's one premise. Um, the other one is, as it is right now, people can't, for whatever reason or however they came to do it or live that way, they can't go back. Before maybe they could, before the gay movement after the 70s and the, the whole political uh, endorsing and promoting the comfort and the protection of and the equal rights and all this obsession with making it be just like anything else that's completely equal, like a choice on the menu. What that has brought with it is a suppression of any negativity or any questioning of it. This is something people don't understand and they don't know how to see it. It's very weird. It's, it, if you tell somebody, for example, we don't have the option of changing our mind and living that way for a while and then saying, hey, you know what, I really per would prefer to not do that anymore. I, would, I really would prefer to wake up whatever is late in me or somehow I just don't want it. That befuddles society because and there's a reason for that. Um, it's not just because we've neglected the... It, there's something that says if you... There's something that obligates through the, um, through the attitude of endorsing and accepting and protecting and, you know, and accepting and all that, it automatically seems to cause people to, uh, society to not uh, be endowed with the knowledge or the notion of uh, also protecting and acknowledging and accepting the reversal of it. Um, it's it's very weird. Nobody set out to do that. Nobody set out to say, "Hey, we let's keep people from from reverting or from changing their mind or from uh, s straightening." <laughs> you know, nobody did that. But it automatically caused that for some reason. And this is this is very interesting, and it actually has an explanation uh, because homosexuality, though it's inside human sexuality, but it's because it's sort of like a, a joining of two wires that are, that, are, that are supposed to be diffused in two different directions, it is like carrying two wires together and simultaneously having two energies, two different currents at the same time. Uh, and that's why it, it always comes with a discomfort or a natural homophobia. You know, guys, uh, you know, adolescents or whenever or however they try it, then they always are uncomfortable, no matter what culture. Even if they've never been exposed to evil, repressive Catholicism, no matter if they're two guys on a deserted island and they go ahead and do it, they will feel funny because of this um, a joint, this um, simultaneous... It's not against, going against the current, it's almost like presenting something that has no uh, no furthering it has no setup it has no stability and and we join it with the will of doing it it's almost like having to to make in any case when you say do it accept it uh, applaud it um, endorse it and what have you homosexuality and, and be happy about it you know applaud people when they do you're bringing with it you're bringing with it that part that is uncomfortable, that ex that is basically the essence of why people have always frowned upon it or gotten offended, disgusted, or want to stay away, or what have you. Um, that goes with it. And so automatically, you can't say yes and no at the same time. It automatically suppresses what would 
because in reality, the, 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 the current is towards the optimal form of sexuality, which is not towards homosexuality. We're kind of obligating going towards homosexuality in, in, in today, today in the West, in this modern sexual movement. And it's kind of pushing it to do something that sexuality does not want to do. And because we're pushing it to do something that it's not designed to do, it also it comes with a, a an automatic suppression of what would be uh, the alternative. To me, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to try it anymore. It's very interesting. This is the best I can explain it right now, but I hope it, it renders the idea. So it is another reason. We, right now, we don't have the freedom to uh, to say, you know, people are obligated to go to the church because in the church, you know, with the whole thing about God and, you know, frowns upon it and it's a sin. And and so it's all very, the, the negativity is all very clearly defined. And so it's the only place where their refusal of, of homosexuality is accepted because in society we're not accepting the refusal of uh, the psychology field um, like I said before like I explained before erroneously though it prescribed um, you know healing of the individual in reality it's 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 society that needs to learn how to where it messed up on that kid and needs to learn how to nurture our children and our young people however it's, you know be there for them and uh, uh, was there, but we repressed it. We said, we said, we actually said, no, don't try to heal homosexuality. And, and, and that mistake came because we automatically had to establish, we forced ourselves to establish, there is no other way of explaining the uh, acceptance of it than to say, um, and the denial of, of the psychological nurturing uh, sort of medical understanding of homosexuality or scientific understanding of homosexuality, than to say, you're born that way, like Lady Gaga says. God made me that way and everybody's happy. We don't have to think about it anymore. And so when we did that, it automatically had to suppress the into the the sort of the scientific or the medical uh, path on it um we made a mess we made a complete mess because we had we felt we needed to force it and, and install it in society and culture and make it something that and homosexuality does not have a stability um people should realize should ask themselves why do we try so hard why do you know kids and adoption and da, da 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 and we're when you try something when you force something against the current you will obligatorily make mistakes for example one uh, mistakes one mistake in the in the, the, the ethical legality of adoption is that we're recruiting we are all born with a natural right to have a mother and a father now in every other country that's not America, post seventies pro gay community, uh, that is as simple as water. <laughs> you know, we're all natural human rights: water, food, shelter, right, health, da da da. A mother and a father, a family. We have the right to have friends. We have the right to congregate. We have all these rights are totally natural, um, and yet we have decided that a child should not be protected in their right to be raised by a, a man and a woman <laughs> as, as it was designed by evolution. We simply, to satisfy our agenda of, of installing homosexuality in society, we decided that kids can be adopted by gay parents, right? But I don't have actually anything against um, matrimony, although the group does also, uh, because I see matrimony as a union. What I don't, you know, and perhaps it should be called differently. I mean, if it's a bonding or, you know, wedding of two males, friendships of bonded forever, it doesn't matter. That's that in itself. What I do have something that is in, in the injustice of taking away from an innocent baby the right to be raised by a mother and a father. 
uh, I think that's where I have a problem with matrimony, uh, gay matrimony. I don't, if this is another problem that the word matrimony did, it kind of fudged the difference. It, it, it got it obliterated the difference there. Two guys or two women want to be partners for life and share their stuff and and share their insurances and have their families come to each other's funerals, what have you. That's there should be. Why not? There should be some kind of a dolphin spin, supposedly a couple for, for life, right? Uh, but if we're going to raise a child, that's not fair on the child because it's our sort of uh, social audacity of, of, of pushing, you know. It's almost like uh, we invented a car. Look, hey, you know, uh, this is a way of solving the problems of our society. It's just having love, emotional love with the same gender. And all of a sudden, it's soothing. I, I, do, I no longer feel... You know, it's the whole subject is fascinating. There's a relief. Uh, you know, the, the point should be that our society, that it serves us to make a better society. No, not that we continue, we install homosexuality because we just mess up with the way we treat one another and our, our ways of, of looking at values and principles in, in so far as how to treat each other socially, civilly how government treats its people, all these things are resulting in homosexuality. So right now, it's almost like a band-aid. People feel relieved, like, oh, it's, you know, I, I, I remember this when I was younger. I noticed this psychologically in me, and there was this, this sort of like, I, I can't bear having to take care of myself by falling in love, supposedly what to me, or what they were telling me was falling in love or obsession or something, sexual attraction towards another male. It's almost like you can be carried like you're still an adolescent and that man, although logically it didn't make sense because you were both supposed to be working and taking care of yourself, in the psychology of the mind, it was like uh, a, a truce. You could all of a sudden uh, no longer feel some burden that you couldn't understand what that burden was, but obviously it's all the stuff that was that I suffered through my mother and my father growing up the way I did and the relationships I didn't have with male boys when I was growing up. And so all of a sudden that fit like a glove. It was, and I think this is really what's behind the, uh, the elation that uh, the gay community feels. It's like they can throw off all these lacks that we, we are so inept at understanding right now uh, and comprehending how they come about producing homosexuality and, and development but whatever they are it's a relief it's and then that's probably why they're parading and, and and shouting because all of a sudden they're like a clean slate no more problems uh, problem solved take the pill you know just find the love of another man get it all out well, of course when it comes to sexuality then they, anyways i don't want to get too deep into this but um um, so people ask me to answer the question. The point is to bring a better world because if we really become good in a way that we've never known at knowing how, how the lack of uh, confident self-development and uh, psychological uh, capacity happens in children, not just because of how the parents are treating the child, but also uh, because of things that don't get addressed when they take their problems to school and how the kids treat them because of how their parents had have, have been to that you know we're not savvy as a society where were we to all of a sudden understand in detail every little instance that ends up being um affecting or nurturing of homosexual development it means that we can take it back to saying to to basically what will teach us to be better towards one another, uh, towards how we love and understand each other in society, because we'd be looking at how much homosexuality it produces. So this to me is an enormous value in understanding how some homosexuality occurs, because if we were to heed it, it means that if we would know where we're just being uh, cold or distant or uncaring or unnurturing or too individualistic or too unintimate, too uninvolved perhaps, you know, with each other and 
different areas, different parts of society, and we would be a better world. It, it would potentially, it's like the little, it's like a seed looking looking into the future or a seed looking backwards and seeing where the tree is going to go based on, on where, how it was planted or something like this. I don't know. But um, you get, you get the diagrammatical idea. And so there's this reason, the reason for flexibility for saying, well, you know, maybe we will never get to a perfect world, but you know, I sure as hell would like to uh, have the option of saying, Hey, you know what, who's out there that can tell me how maybe I can walk out of this. And if you tell another male, instead of getting freaked out and saying, oh, oh okay, I believe you. I believe you. you. You found yourself. You know, you can be my friend. Let's go, go hang out with my friends, you know. And you're accepted as somebody that, you know, is trying to, like somebody who's trying to quit cigarettes or just quit drinking or something. And they're not, the people are not scared of that person. You know, they're not. They're not keeping it quiet. Don't say anything. No, they're they know what the person's going through, and so there would be a world there for that person. Right now, there isn't that world for that person at all. We have all sorts of negativity and doubting, and girls don't believe you. Girl, you know this is the funny part. I always think of this. I remember in high school. I'll wrap it up now. I remember in high school, and this changed a lot. I, I saw how it changed a lot as I as the years went by. Girls. A, no, you know, a girl will always know better that, uh, than a, another male because a male understands how powerful and how tricky and how seducive and the prowess of, of sexuality and male sexuality is. Another girl, you know, another girl being that she understands first that and foremost that a man is you know, it's the one that's supposed to compliment her sexually will believe more in a guy that, you know, is not really gay. I mean, how many people have known, gay guys have known that best girlfriend in high school that said, he's really not gay. I don't care what people say, you know, and we go, we go, and then they, the, that went into culture and the, they were, you'd see like, what was it during the goth period that um, the, the boy and the girl would, they were kind of like, best buddies or sort of platonic lovers and they started going to gay clubs together and you know we were doing these things naturally and in any case um what i'm trying to say is that it's a it's a real tragedy that women being the first one that would believe a guy really doesn't want to be gay in the case of those guys that are looking for the world to to believe them so they can find a way of of nurturing and meeting different people and nurturing what they still need to mature or grow or what have you, that they would find in that world women who more so than men would believe them because that's what seems to me, that's what to me would make sense it, uh, of the species. That first, uh, the girl will not make, see any sense in, in, in a guy going with another guy. So therefore, a girl would be the one to most believe a guy when he says, you know what, I was never really happy. I just don't see a world that is, has any way of, of helping me or nurturing me or believing me or what have you. And the, the, it would be the girl that would say, I, I definitely, you know, I definitely believe you. And, I, and the, the, the compassion or the empathy would be most real in that woman. A guy is a little different. It's, it's more like the guy would expect you to try a little harder or something, but it still would be about um empathy and knowing how difficult and knowing how you know how slutty guys can be you know, like sometimes it's just want to do things secretly or whatever and anyways it would be very different to right right now if any any guy that tries that not in the church or in a, a self-help psychology group but just goes out into the street especially in america and and starts talking about how um, about it, you know, how like they were convinced that they were happy living gay, but now they're, they're really looking to live differently. And they were really happiest when they had that one girlfriend for a while. And they, they just, they saw how much better they, they felt about themselves during that relationship. And he liked himself sexually a lot more. He didn't like what he did sexually with guys. He liked them. And so since that girl's gone, 
he's he's really looking to see to continue on that path that guy would just find a desert right now in America if that guy tried to speak normally not in the church not in a self-help group but just out on the street among his friends at, at wherever at the gym at work or at the at the Starbucks he would find confused don't know what to say back to that person a desert that's what we've done <laughs> we've done because by by forcing homosexuality to exist we've taken with it a repression of the alternative it, it can't the reversal or the the occurrence of somebody changing their mind has no more space we've subtracted that space and we didn't intentionally do it like i said before it's automatically what happens when you know it's almost like a I almost see like a, a, a model, a three-dimensional model. I can sort of understand like physics. Like you push water in one direction, it will create a, um, a, a void. A, um, yeah, what do you call it? Void, yeah, void. When you take the air out of a space, it, it sucks. <laughs> there's no air, there's no pressure. It creates a void, right? Um, because we pushed it in the other direction. Anyways, I just wanted to add that because I know a lot of people were, are saying probably, well, what's what's why are you doing this why do you think it's important well for one thing if you were a male if you understand a man's inner emotional uh sense of of human dignity of you know um you know we're not objects they're uh right now we're thinking very superficially very functionally um but um if you were let's say okay if you take a straight man i'm going to say this this way if you take a, a man who's only been a man's man you know and, and it's just a rugby player or what have you you know and just does not understand homosexuality or what those people do i don't even want to hear it right um and he somehow he drug him and he ends up being sodomized um the next day he will have a whole bunch of feelings and emotions regarding that which has to do with his maleness if it was a female and she was raped let's say for example her her set of feelings and emotions will be particular and the the it won't be so much about dignity or honor it will it's just horrible the possibly much deeper and worse just in you couldn't even find words uh, for a woman the, the destruction of her soul when when um, she's raped or or something like that happened with a guy it's something pretty bad too but you know there are some words there that you could use and so no but in america we're totally incapable of understanding this right now because we've created a completely different world about it but if you can understand that maybe some guys uh, have lived homosexually, maybe, um, you know, or, or have done it for a little while, not thinking it was a big deal. And then all of a sudden they start growing and maturing their, their wisdom, their understanding of, uh, of, of the human condition. You know, they become more intelligent and more understanding terminology that has to do with, um, with things such as honor and dignity. And then all of a sudden it hits them what they've done with their with their butt before and they may feel that horrible um humiliation that the rugby player felt when when uh when he woke up the next morning after being drugged i mean just because the guy lived homosexuality and then he woke up or developed or matured after a few years his maleness they never never our our, our expression of manhood of maleness and all the feelings and all the psychological part of our brain that evolved together with the body the body and our anatomy it never goes away i mean the male brain is always attached to the male body and the female brain and, and her emotions and all her natural particular to womanhood and her anatomy will never leave her either and so if the male all of a sudden develops his maleness and has several girlfriends one day he's on his he has he's on his third girlfriend one day he's with his girlfriend and suddenly he he gets a glimpse of him 10 years before and 
how he was you know shouting and out of from out of the pleasure of, of being sodomized and he may feel that same deep um degrading but not degrading so much as it is personal and intimate humiliation and shame um and so and and of course it's something so particular and personal to the male he may never be able to even share that much less with his girlfriend maybe his best friend perhaps um but today in america i don't know how uh, if anybody would be able to find a best friend like that who would know exactly how you're feeling when you remembered that uh, so this is another reason which is hard to understand i realize in today's culture but the what um you know this level of understanding of the human soul is very difficult to even be smart and find enough people that are intelligent and smart to talk about in the society that we've created now so but you know there are the other aspects perhaps are being a little more uh practical or sort of sort of uh, diagrammatical for example how that could how understanding how homosexuality develops can lead directly to a better society perhaps that is more easy 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 to grasp and and just the freedom and and also and a fourth one the fourth one is that we're actually we actually created an extra separation i mean we're trying to not have segregation and you know we should throw in there i wish we should throw in here i wish we could, we would just stop calling each other black and white and just treat each other as human beings who are all american and our american culture and enough of who's latino who's white who's black you know but in any case we say we don't want segregations and and we don't understand that we continue categorizing people and so in the name of not being racist or not being segregating we created we just created another one now before homosexuality was just something that happened to the species it didn't separate men and women actually it we, we all kind of understood that this could happen to anybody now we've created two a new class of people who were born that way and people who who don't you know they stayed away from it somehow somehow you know they're so it's like we've again by forcing something against the current of the natural design of, of human sexuality we've created all these uh errors that 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 tag along that come along with that insistence and one of them is now we have we've created a segregated class now they may seem like they're happy and i don't know uh, you know maybe somebody that was in that community that gay community thought that they are now uh finally got theirs and now they have their city and their rights and their laws and what have you and then one of those guys decides, suddenly realizes you know what i didn't like myself i don't want that anymore and he sees that society doesn't let him out of that group anymore he's he turns around and when he turns around he realizes he's been put in a category you know if that's what you want you may not see that but if uh you all of a sudden change go live somewhere else you know go live in another country and discover how much you like yourself going out with girls and then you go to america and you realize there's no space for you to not be gay you have to be in that community and this is what we've done <laughs> we've created we've obligated people to say i was born that way and end of story so there are a lot of reasons <laughs> there are a lot of reasons to bring on this this game changer, this different level of intelligence of, uh, on our our uh, own human sexuality. Uh, you know, there certainly isn't. It's it's just a, a huge, enormous, broad set of important, uh, deep reasons. So, you know, I hope this answers that question. All right. Bye.